In this video, we will export scenario data to a database and explore how the data is stored in it. We will use a basic simulation scenario example that is available out of the box. Let's run it to see that it works well. No problem here. We are interested in the way the data is stored. Here, in any logistics, all the data is stored in the input tables. The exported data is stored in the same way, so it won't be difficult to find the required values in the database. However, consider the following peculiarities. As for instance, the inventory table. The initial stock value is defined directly in the table cell. Then there are policy parameters, which are defined in a dialog box. Such values are stored outside of the exported table. Now let's see how it is done. In the export dialog of the required scenario, we define the type of the database. We will be using Postgres database and its connection settings. If the connection settings are correct, you will see the confirmation that the connection has been established. And finally, we export the data to the specified database. Now we switch to the database and refresh it to get the exported data. Here it is. This long list of tables is practically the same list that we see if the export is done to an Excel file with just a few distinctions that we will further talk about. The most obvious one would be the table naming. The names of the tables in the database start with export and additionally contain the type of scenario the table refers to. It may also contain a column name if such table is created to keep data from a certain column of the parent any logistics table. For example, we have this export underscore sim underscore groups table. It contains two groups, customers and Japan sites. And then there are tables export underscore sim underscore groups underscore customers and export underscore sim underscore groups underscore sites, which have the content of the customers and Japan sites groups respectively. Okay, now let's see what type of tables we have here. The list comprises tables with scenario and experiment settings, project units and their conversions, icons, table with custom parameters entries, and finally the actual any logistics input tables with the exported scenarios data. Let us start with the inventory table. We will see that it contains the same four policies. However, the policy parameters are not here. They are stored in the custom underscore parameters underscore entries table. How do we find them there? We will use the ID of the required policy. Let's take for example the MinMax policy for the DC Tokyo facility. Here's its ID. Now we go to the custom underscore parameters underscore entries table and scroll all the way down to the inventory object with this ID. Here it is. You might have noticed that we had to scroll quite a bit to these records. The reason is this table keeps parameters from all other tables. By parameters, we mean data that is not defined directly in the table cell. Now, we will go back to the inventory table to update the initial stock of the MinMax policy for the DC Tokyo facility. There, now we will import the updated policy from this database to the existing scenario in any logistics. Open any logistics and remove all data from the inventory table to exclude data duplication as the result of the import. Open the import dialog and define the database connection settings. Then choose the scenario to import the data to. And finally, select the inventory table to import. Good. Here it is, the new initial stock value. We can run the simulation experiment now to make sure it runs well. Yes, it works fine. But what if we export scenarios of different types to one database? In this case, a new set of tables will be created for this scenario type. Let us open a GFA example and export it to our database in the very same way. Now we refresh the database. And here they are. 
That's it. Thanks for watching. Click all buttons below this video and see you next time.